Hey everyone, this is not a normal review from me by any means. This set is more significant, more special to me personally than almost anything you will see me ever review or cover in any way on any channel or in any form. It's Deep Sea Refuge, came out in 1997. I personally bought one of these, not this exact set right here, but one identical to it, brand new in box from a Toys R Us store in 1999, thereby ending my first dark age, bringing me back to Lego as an adult for the very first time. Well, for some stubborn reason, I have not purchased one of these sets. I actually have many of the pieces of my original, probably not all, because a lot of them have been distributed about in custom things. But this is now being brought to all of us by a Patreon supporter who asked for this as a high level, high tier reward. So thanks go out to Louisa S on Patreon for the fact that I'm now going to be looking at this with all of you with great nostalgia. Or am I? You see, while I did buy one of these sets in 1999, bringing me out of my dark age, I never built it. At least I never built it like this. I went straight to making a custom build. So this will be my personal first time ever experiencing this in its original intended form. I guess I could be cheeky and say, this is where the fun began. This set is from the Divers theme, and it was the big one from that theme, coming with a 32 by 32 ocean exploration space that represents the seabed with the tan base plates underneath. There's a bottom of the sea exploration base that's fairly sizable, a medium sized yellow submarine, a small to medium sized research vessel that'll be up on the surface, which can be used for retrieving artifacts and also tethering to the submarine and you get some figures and a plethora of scary animals to get in your way or to cause potential danger for you or just to be really interesting to look at. Let's look at the boat first. It's probably one of the more basic, more straightforward things in the set. Uh, it is built with a few specialized bow pieces stacked on top of each other. Two different types. One of them is for on deck and the other two are below. This will not float. There's a little bit of storage space up front and I just threw one of those little propulsion devices under there that can be used with a minifigure. There are a couple of those in the set. It's a six wide build. You have some instrumentation up high. Uh, an antenna. This is a radar bar. That's actually a printed piece, which is pretty nice. And you can spin that around full 360. You've got the diver down flag back there, which you can take down from its current location and put it somewhere lower. You can even put it directly on the water though they don't include a buoy to, to use with that. There are stickers all throughout the set, so you'll see a bunch of those. Two things that are not stickers though are the prints inside the wheelhouse. So there's a map there that's just a two by two tile and also a familiar looking printed two by two slope piece. There's also a wheel in the wheelhouse basically just enough space inside of there to place a single figure. I put a figure here just for the sake of scale for you. This is a winch with the, the handle on the other side to wind it up and you can move this boom up and down just you know, using the, the old finger hinge system and ultimately this just has a hook at the end of it so you can raise and lower that. They give you a net to use for uh, bringing artifacts up from down below or you can possibly net an animal if you want to, although I don't recommend that. Better to use inanimate objects, but on the base of this, you may see some weird things. They're just uh, inverted tiles, you know, just to make it smoother, easier to move around on a, on a hard surface, possibly one that's not completely smooth. And last, this is just one of the longest of strings that they ever made with studs at either end. So you can use this to tether to your underwater vehicle or to anything, you know. The submarine, I'd say, is pretty well decorated. It's probably one of the more interesting looking ones that they've done. It's like a, a medium size, not one of the smallest, not the very largest, I think, as of its day, but one of the larger ones. Plenty of stickers are used on this, which, in my opinion, really added a lot. You know, just made it look a little bit more official, a little bit more believable, like there's more serious stuff on it. it has some thrusters underneath, or maybe those are related to 
ballasts. Uh, if you have divers out, you can have them bring small artifacts and place them in these little compartments on the sides, which also had stickers. So there's one on either side there. And then the arms are fully articulated. You know, they're able to move around all kinds of ways, and they just have uh, little clips at the ends that are used as hands. Those are on ball joints, so they can be articulated really just however you want to, to manipulate objects. You got some representations of lights up here. Those use the trans neon greenish yellow colored parts. Looks like this one may be a little bit loose. Those older clips uh, would loosen up or sometimes actually break over time. But you know, this is at least looking like it's pretty well sealed up. There are no air gaps involved with this. So that is really nice to see or was really nice to see back in the day. You can open this up from the sides, but there's not great access inside of there, honestly. Pull this off, that helps a little bit more, but there's a little bit of space for some storage, some cargo, you know, to be held in there. You can also pass things forward to the the uh, driving compartment or the operator's compartment, but it's a little bit, a little bit difficult. It's just a little extra space, I guess you could use. That is a printed piece right there, which is nice. I think that was exclusive to this theme. So some, some relevant print right there. And then of course the operator's compartment can open up. So there you can see just that little bit of space where you could possibly pass them something forward and back. But this also has prints inside of it. So that's a very common print over on the left side for us, the right side for us. I believe that's another print that was exclusive just to this theme. And then there's a full seat in there. So seats one person there, essentially seats one person there as well. And I guess the idea is that the person back here could potentially be a, d a diver if you want to deploy them, or you could just keep them dry at all times. It's entirely up to you. Ultimately though, this is just the quintessential ocean exploration toy. It's a good size. You can use your imagination to pilot it wherever you want. It has enough realism or enough things that a kid could think are realistic looking that, you know, it becomes more immersive than some simpler toys. Again, I really think that the decorations between the stickers and the prints really help to bolster the imagination. And I really appreciate the fact that it's completely closed up. That just helps with the uh, suspension of, of disbelief. You know, when you have big gaps in something that's supposed to be underwater, yeah, you can pretend the gaps aren't there, but here you don't have to pretend with that part. You can just pretend about exactly where you are and what you're finding underwater. Here I've arranged the ocean floor scene, basically how they show it in the instructions, just as a neutral starting point. So let us go ahead and explore this space. I mentioned there are a lot of animals in this set. Well, it comes with two of these black colored mantas. So you can imagine that they are having some sort of social interaction, either flying around underwater together or, or possibly competing for food. I don't know, maybe they're friends, maybe they're foes. Each one is able to be posed at a, a different height, and you can interchange these around to different little stations, if you will, with the help of these seaweed pieces, and some of them are elevated, some of them are not. Uh, I'm assuming that this is relatively shallow water if we have actual seaweed here, so not really deep sea exploration, is it? Big anchor there is just something that you can explore as a, as a human or as a minifigure. Uh, more seaweed there. You also will find some flower stems around just to add a little extra suggestion of, of flora or possibly just green fauna, like green colored corals, I, I suppose. This is fairly uncommon, this dolphin piece. I think there were two molds uh, similar to this made. I didn't look up which one this is, but yeah, it's just a, a very special thing. Nice uh, old gray color. And uh, yeah, just, you know, looks really nice has a smile on it and everything you don't see realistic dolphins like that from lego these days they're overdue to add some in uh, again in the instructions this is just how they had things laid out so a diver propulsion unit right there and then these are supposed to be some some specimens that you can collect but they kind of look like they're just panels like they're preformed and possibly even have some light going through them well that's to go with an x-ray machine that's inside the main base, but this is how they have you spread it out. So the idea is you have to go out, you have to collect the samples, and I'm, I'm assuming they would have to be on like slides or something. Just again, just working with the imagination and, and the setup, 
I think that's what you're supposed to do. And then you can bring them back and then put them into the x-ray machine, which we'll check out. It's actually kind of cool. Under there, you've got some coins, which are in the old uh, uh, chrome gold color. That's just a regular octopus in plain black. A bunch of stickers are used to add a little extra detail here. Let me move this pretty great white colored shark out of the way for a moment. But, you know, they tried to liven up the big ugly rock piece back there with some additional details that are you know, done with the stickers rather than just relying upon things added on. A couple of those stickers are appealing a little bit. There's a funny sticker around the other side. Let me see if we can see it from this angle. Uh, it's going to be a little bit rough. Will it just fit? Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it. There we go. Look at that. See, so just a couple of eyes in a little nook, so you don't know what that is. You don't know what kind of animal is inside, or even if it's a person. So just being a little bit a little bit funny there and you know, supplying a little more food for the imagination. Here's uh, another animal that's relatively rare, uh, a sawfish. I used to think that these were sharks, like a saw-nosed shark or something, but they're actually not sharks. They're just saw-nosed fish, sawfish, and it's based on the shark mold. So it uses the shark body and kind of a shark head shape, but it just has that, that unique shape at the front, which is pretty cool. More underwater fauna or flora whichever you want it to be another part of a sunken sunken ship right there and also probably that chain is part of a sunken ship as well and then just looking at this shark it's just in white old shark plain white so you could call it a great white shark is it great i think it's okay i think it's good and back in the day it felt collectible to me this was my personal favorite most inspiring part of the set Mostly because of the specialized pieces used for the walls around the edges. Just the shapes were really interesting to me. You know, they're, they're not typical Lego things. And back in those days, I wasn't all immersed in, in the rules of Lego and the rules of being a Lego fan. I had nothing whatsoever against specialized pieces. They were amazing to me. And you can see some of those same molds were used in yellow for the submarine. I ended up liking... Lego submarines quite a lot and collecting quite a bunch of them in modern times. I like those ports. The window parts are actually trans light blue, so you could kind of see inside of there. And you didn't have to actually insert those. They came pre-inserted. Again, some stickers were used on the outside. This is a printed piece here just on top. And the, the canopies, the, the bubbles, can also be opened up. So you could imagine that they're like uh, airlocks or something or just observation ports entirely up to you. But these just swing open like that. I think that thinking of it as an airlock would have been a good thing. And you can fit a minifig past that space. Uh, to get access to the interior to play in there, you can open up the roof. It's hinged, so you don't have to remove it. But that doesn't really give you enough space to properly get inside there. It's more of just a just a teaser lets you see inside but if you want to get inside then you need to come around to this side and open it all up splitting the seabed for full access that's pretty cool looks good here makes it look like it's just a larger base and it changes the look and feel of everything from the outside as well just a, a different way to display this and or play with it this is the room where you would suit up with your diving equipment and all that is just extra stuff. We actually have some figures already set up as divers, but you can set up more of the included figures as divers with the full extra scuba suits. They even have the chrome silver colored uh, diving knives. And the center part is where they would just drop down. So the idea is that this would be, of course, a pressurized space. And thus, you'd be sitting in a bubble, and if you want to go in the water, you just drop right in. It's just, just a hole in the floor, so you just go right through. Don't need an airlock. This is potentially feasible, but I personally have always liked the idea of going through airlocks. Plus, this isn't the greatest clearance underneath. It's much easier to put a figure through that opening over there than it is to drop one down here and then try to fish it out from underneath. And on the other side of the room is the x-ray machine. You know it's an x-ray machine because it says x-ray on it. So what you do here is open the top and load a sample into the bed. So there's just another of those little 2x2 two two tiles. That one represents a seahorse and it's printed in blue. 
and red. When you look at that through blue, you don't see the red part of it, you just see the blue outline. So that creates a, an interesting effect, which makes you feel like you're, you're looking through an optical device. You know, it changes the view. So it you know, kind of tricks you a little bit. Here's another of the tile pieces. So I think this is supposed to represent an eel. And when you put that in, because of the way they printed it, you see just the skeleton of the eel. So you see just its bones. That works more properly like an x-ray. And the very last one is kind of funny and kind of odd. It's looking like a shell, like almost a conch shell. But you can see that there's a crab inside of it. And when you put it in the x-ray machine, you can see that more clearly. So the shell portion of it disappears and you see just the crab. So it's, it's a crab that got stuck inside of a mollusk. Here's the lineup of the figures. Notice the two on the left share a torso design. And then these three share a torso design. The same thing is under there as you see here. Also included in the set are two extra black caps. So all of these could be on the surface or in the safety of the pressurized interior environment of the sub or the, the underwater base. And we also already saw that there are two additional scuba outfits, or at least, you know, the, the set of accessories needed to turn a couple of these guys into divers. So ultimately, in the end, you could have all but one of them being divers, or you could have all of them being non-divers. Here I took the dive fins off of these two just to make them easier to stand up and rotate around. So you can take a closer look at their accessories and everything. These were pretty realistic, you know, they're, they're full setups. You got the camera on the left that's in the yellow color, single air tank on the back, and the goggles, the visors were done in just a plain trans clear. These had completely different heads, so they were not fully generic. They represented different actual individuals, different facial hair, and also different color and style of the normal hair. Here again, non-shared faces, so they're unique. I would assume that the guy on the left would be in some sort of leadership position. So he's the, the dive lead, the project manager or something. I don't know. He just, he looks a little extra special and kind of stands out from the rest. And then taking off these caps, you can see <laughs> his eyebrows are pretty funny. And there's just a little bit of, come on, pop off. There we go. A little bit of additional hair. So that's the same hairstyle and color as one of the divers, but it's not the same head because this one does not have any facial hair and he does have the microphone boom. Lastly, there's this guy and with the exception of his flotation device there, he is identical to that very last figure we were just looking at, which is probably the reason that on the box, they kind of suggest that you turn his, his cap around or something to make him, make him look a little bit a little bit unique, a little bit different. So he's not just a clone. Now I'm very fortunate to have gotten a set that included the original box. So we can check that out up close. That is what greeted me in that Toys R Us store in 1999. And check this out. This was back in the day when they still used windows. So you could get a, a preview of the parts inside. And there was also an in, inside flap which kind of acted like the back of the box does nowadays, where you see alternate scenes, you see more of the details, more of the things included, not quite so posed altogether. And you can also see the interior detail. And because they did that on the inside flap that left the actual back of this box to show another thing that they don't do very much anymore, alternate builds. Look at that. How cool is that? very inspiring. That's probably what got me started building my first custom builds from the parts of this thing. While we're talking about being fortunate and other stuff that I was able to get with this particular set, I got off Bricklink. This is a poster, an original poster. I don't remember this. I'm assuming it came with this set, this being the biggest set in the in the theme but i don't i don't remember it myself look at that it's pretty big pretty detailed pretty cool and it shows the uh the airlock being used like i suggested there some of the things that you could do 
show some of the, the other sets from this theme. I think I've reviewed, I don't know, a couple other sets from this theme. Eventually, I'd like to be able to complete it. Overall, you know what? This set doesn't strike me as cool in its standard form as I thought that it would. Um, I actually personally have more of an emotional connection to the pictures on the box because that's really what inspired me more. For for me, even though this this was such a pivotal pivotal set in my Lego life, um, I look at the at the parts and they excite me. But the whole set together doesn't excite me as much, and that's surprising. I really thought that I was gonna be like, oh, 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 oh. but but I'm not. <laughs> partly because I never did assemble it in this form. I think it's quite good. This is certainly good. This is certainly playable. It's a little bit on the simple side, but it works. You've got all these animals. I mean, we don't get animals like that anymore, especially that variety. A double of those two. I mean, so many. All this play space with this big base plate. However, two base plates, you know, split in half. However, a lot of that space is just completely plain with not even any terrain on it. Uh, I probably would have been more excited if they still had the Mars or Moon uh, base plates available and they just had it in tan or maybe even the original gray color. I think that probably would have been just fine as well. But I definitely find this to be pleasantly surprising. Uh, it just works really well and how that completely changes the shape of the entire set and how you play with it, that is that is pretty pretty beautiful. It's, it's it's a very very good thing. Looking at it from the other side as well, just considering the display possibilities of that. Had I really understood this this view of it and that this feature was built in already, you didn't have to do any customization uh, back then in '99 to 2000. I probably wouldn't have started out making a custom build, I probably would have built this because this is what I wanted. I wanted something that was not very deep and they would have a nice open space where you could see it from one side. You could see all the little details. You can appreciate the details uh, even as even as a passerby. So definitely unexpected feelings and, and thoughts from me. It was a good set to be sure. It was a really nice theme um, and compared to some of the other things that were on the market, during this time, uh, I think this this stands the test of time for the most part. But yeah, it's different. It, it, it's, it's really unexpected for me. But I very much, very, very much appreciate, once again, Patreon supporter Louisa S. for essentially sponsoring this, getting it in my hands. And uh, I'm, what I'm probably gonna do is put this sub down into my custom underwater display area, put these animals down there as well. I, I'm considering placing this down there just as it is, just, just to remember it like that. But there's still a possibility that I'll do the same thing that I did back in 99 to 2000 and use all these super, super cool parts to make something custom again. And I might even mix in some of my leftover parts that I still have from my own personal original set that are just kind of hanging around. So no matter what, a lot of good came out of this and I hope that you enjoyed following along with me. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this. I don't have a build for this because I just did it on my own time. I really wanted to enjoy it. I really wanted to, to immerse myself in it just personally without thinking about the, the filming process and all that. So I, I just did it you know, completely separately and kind of uh, on, on my own time. And I think that that contributed positively to my personal experience, which then I was able to, in some ways, convey to all of you. So thanks again to the Patreon supporter and thanks to all of you for watching this. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you again soon.